Hey guys, and welcome to another What's in the Box. Uh, I probably sound kind of rough, or maybe I don't, because maybe I've stripped out the audio and I'm going to replace it with another audio track, because I currently have a bad chest infection. However, something that I have ordered and have been eagerly awaiting for a while has actually arrived. So, welcome to What's in the Box. This is a accessory for a switch and hopefully it's going to be um, quite transformative in how I actually play with it and take it on the go. So let's have a little look inside. Now I've already opened this and I've already played with it for nearly a week, but I'm just going to show you guys roughly what it is like to unbox and what is inside. Now this is the cracked Nitro Deck Plus. Now, some of you may remember, if you're into the Switch scene, that they brought out a cracked Nitro Deck about a year ago. Um, it was interesting, and I certainly had my eye on it. However, I thought for the money that it just was not worth it. The reason being is you kind of have to lock your Switch into this thing. And the original model was uh, not compatible with any kind of dock. And that's still the case with this one. So in the original model, you had to eject and remove your switch every time you wanted to dock it. And well, sir, that just was not going to fly. So in this model, uh, this revision, the Nitro Deck Plus, uh, that's still the same. However, the whole thing is a dock which is a fantastic upgrade. Uh, they've also changed the stick layout. Uh, they're now kind of like the Wii U gamepad. They're, asymmet uh, they're not asymmetrical, they're symmetrical. Whereas on the original Nitro Deck, they were asymmetrical, kind of like an Xbox controller. So docked mode is now available. Uh, they're Hall Effect sticks, which means they use magnetic resistance. So, there's no worry about stick drift or anything like that. Now, I have loads of Joy-Cons and I have had five switches. Bit of a story behind that. Uh, probably too out of the scope of this video. But I have never had stick drift or anything like that. I've been very lucky and I know a lot of people that have. But, you know, it is something that I always think about, always worry about, but hopefully with this device, uh, we don't have to worry about this. I bought this about, I bought this about five weeks ago, but it only arrived about a week ago because it was constantly delayed and it was a pre-order. And because it's a pre-order, I got some extra goodies. Now, I actually did think that this was gonna come with a case uh, as a pre-order bonus. It, it did not. <laughs> It did not, but I'll show you what I got instead, which, well, I mean, fine, I guess. I might actually have to, oh, no, she comes right off, look at that. The branding, the cracked branding, is quite nice. Um, you know, it's a bit odd. There is a lot you can do with this. It has a lot of functions, which you do need the cracked app to access because you connect to this using your phone and then you can adjust all kinds of settings on the fly. I'd like to be able to show you that, I would, but I'm using my phone to record this and the Cracked app is crap. I can assure you of that. Um, it crashes pretty much every single time that uh, I have tried to use it. It's awful. Luckily, I have managed to change some settings on my uh, Nitro Deck, which makes it a lot better. But yeah, it, it's it's not great. So anyway, let's get this out of the way. And I will show you basically what it comes with, which isn't a huge amount, but you don't want loads of junk cluttering up everything up. So this is the pouch. And I believe that's what they meant by it comes with a case. And this is the unit itself. It's pretty substantial. It really is, but the sticks are sublime, let me tell you. They're actually relatively resistive. They're quite tight, which I like. You can also remove the caps, and you can add custom ones or order new ones. Look at this, guys, a D-pad. 
a D-pad on the Switch. You know, the company that invented the D-pad, who refuses to put one on the Switch officially, we now have a D-pad. That in itself is worth the price of this thing alone. Because, you know, I play my Switch 90% handheld. And the stupid, jo oh, don't get me started on the Joy-Cons. Second hated, uh, second most hated controller ever after the Wiimote. Uh, the buttons are very nice, they're clicky. They feel clicky, they don't actually click, they're actually rubber membranes. But they have a nice little snap to them. And they don't rattle, everything is solid. You've got a kickstand around the back, which is, well, I don't know. It is what it is, let's be honest. It's not as good as the kickstand that's actually built into my uh, Switch, but it will keep the system, you know, stood up, which is fine. It's got a pretty interesting ejection system. You push up there and it kind of ejects the Switch. What I do not like about it is this is a very hard textured back. This will scratch your switch, which is why I'm doing this video now, because I intend to put my switch in it and it's never coming out. I have my limited edition switch and I really don't want the artwork to be scratched. Um, we have extra buttons here, which can be remapped to whatever you want. As standard, I think that one's A and that one's B. I don't use them. Uh, I did think they might get in the way, depending on how you hold this thing. At least for me, they don't. So that's fine. On the back, like the Steam Deck, we do have more mappable buttons. Uh, four of them, each for the face buttons. I do use these. I use these a lot. We've got a lot of venting here as well, so the switch is not going to overheat, which isn't super important in handheld mode, but in docked mode it is. We have a symbol here, and that is where you have to scan. Now it says it uses Bluetooth, but considering we've got this and you have to scan this, I th I'm pretty sure it connects through um, NFC, near field communication on your phone. I have a really big phone. I've got a Samsung S24 Ultra. It's hard to scan that because of where it's situated. Uh, I believe these uh, analog-esque triggers here are Hall Effect. Don't like that at all. Why? Because the Switch uses uh, digital buttons. There is no analog support on the uh, Switch. So having that much travel on these is not only completely redundant, it actually impacts how you perform on certain games because there's so much travel, it takes a lot longer to press the button. For example, certain moves on a thousand year door. This really hampers that. These should have been digital clicky buttons, but is it a deal breaker? No, but it is definitely something to, uh, to be aware of. These buttons here, nice and clicky, and they work fine. So let me explain as to why I decided to buy such a device. So this is how I've used my Switch for about a thousand years, I guess. This is the Skull & Co grip. It's nice. There's supposed to be another piece that goes over there and holds it in, but that's in the case. So for the purpose of this, we, we don't have that. And it's fine. But the trouble with the Switch is you then have to rely on this D-pad. It isn't really a D-pad. It's just four face buttons and they're shit. And you have to use the, the kind of small analog sticks on the Switch as well. And again, this is probably personal preference, but I have large hands. These analog sticks, you guessed it, they're shit. And this comes down to the build quality of the Switch as well. Like, it, if you flex it, it doesn't feel like a whole unit because it's not. Obviously, the Joy-Cons are detachable. And because of that, they don't connect. And my cat is distracting me by going through the box. Is that your box now, Leo? Sure. 
So it doesn't have a complete unbreak, unbroken connection, so there's always going to be a little bit of flex and wobble there. Now, that carries over to this grip case as well. That also flexes and wobbles when you move it, and it just feels janky, almost like if you get too into a game, the whole thing's just going to flex and twist apart in your hands. That doesn't. That is also not helped by the fact that these are removable. So another point of motion there. But, you know, it's probably one of the best uh, case, uh, one of the best grips out there. And I do highly recommend it. Especially when the alternative, let's just get rid of these a minute. And it's not the easiest thing to get out. You've got to kind of like push it out. Like, yeah, there we go, come on. Elegant. If there's a better way of using it, I don't know. Now look at this, see this cracked? See these are rubber, you see? These ensure you don't scratch the back of your switch. <gasps> I know, I know, alien technology. So yeah, the switch on its own just, ooh, oh, it's awful, yeah, it rattles. Um, and you can see where it's already been scratched and it's only been out in and out once. This is a massive design failure of that um, of the cracked Nitro deck. And that, for me, gives it an instant failure point. If it wasn't the fact that uh, my Switch is being retired very soon, I would be way angrier about that than I am. So anyway, let's get it set up. Let's take these Joy-Cons off, banish them to the bin, where they will never be seen again. And slide this into, and, and Milo has given me a gift of hair there. And it snaps in, nice, just like that. You still have access to all your controls, obviously. You still have access to your memory card, uh, your game card slot, but you do lose access to your GameCube your GameCube, I'm being distracted <laughs> by messages coming through. You do lose access to your um, micro SD slot. You will have to eject that uh, and, you know, get under that flap. And yeah, that, that's, that's definitely gonna tear up your Switch uh, terribly. I don't know what Cracked were thinking, uh, I would like to go into depth, as I said, to talk about their app because they've got all this rarity um, collectathon stuff built into it. So each of these units has a serial number, and uh, you you go through a reveal, exciting reveal process with the app, where it records your um, reaction of you opening the box and stuff like that. I, I that is a load of nonsense. I don't really get it. It's just shit. Apparently this one, there are three rarities. There's common, there's diamond, and then there's cracked, which is the most ultimate rare. No one's gonna remember any of that. No one's gonna give a shit. But this is a diamond, I believe. So this one is in the middle of rarity. And we all know what that means uh, for resale and stuff like that. It means absolutely nothing because I don't think anybody's going out their way to collect as many of these as they can. Well, there's probably that one person, but we don't care about that one person. So anyway, let's fire it up. It does work very, very nicely. Don't have any issues with how any of the buttons work. Everything feels great. The only thing is that you do when you first put it in, or actually idealistically before you put it in, you have to go down to uh, where is it? Controllers and sensors. And you have to make sure pro controller wired communication is on. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Uh, and some people have reported with the earlier version of this device, just straight up not working at all with the uh, OLED switch, which is something else that I was worried about. But for me, it worked fine. No problems. It's available in two colors. We've got the black see-through one, which is 
fine, I guess. And you've got the white see-through one, which... No thanks. So they both got the purple sticks, I believe. I would have just liked to have a black one. But, you know, I know a lot of people uh, have suggested on the forums just wait until the colour that you want comes out. But I've got an ROG Ally X coming next month. And I'm pretty sure this thing's going to be rendered utterly obsolete by then. Now, for the purpose of pre-ordering, they do throw in a HDMI to USB adapter. Uh, this is important because if you don't get this in the box, you're going to have to buy it separately because this is what essentially turns this system or this grip, I should say, into a dock. It's a very nice uh, branded cable. Very nice, actually, to be fair. Uh, and I'm gonna try this on my ally when it arrives. So you cannot just jam a USB cable into this. On the back, we have an input, which is where you plug your power, and we have an output, which is where you plug your dock into. And then that, you daisy chain into a HDMI. So it is not an elegant solution, but it is a solution that works. And I have played. Oh. Well, here's me going on about stuff and junk. Oh, look at that, you see? Yes, we've turned that setting off, which completely, uh, yeah. Yeah, don't do that because it will render your uh, Nitro Deck or Nitro Deck Plus completely uh, useless. So I've been playing quite a bit of a thousand year door through this and well, is it better than using joy cons? Absolutely. I think it's better than that. I actually think this is a now a really comfortable, really decent handheld experience. It took Nintendo seven years for a third party to actually properly perfect it. But now they have, everything feels great. These analog sticks are so nice. The D-pad literally works as advertised. It's, it's probably one of the nicer D-pads that I've used. I'm not going to lie. The vibration on it is very, very nice. It's very strong. And I've actually um, changed it a little bit using the app. I've dialed that up. And it is really quite potent. It will go higher. And if you don't like vibration, you can completely disable it if you wish. This does not support NFC uh, in regards to Amiibo cards and things like that. So I don't know why. <laughs> Seems to be like the one thing that it doesn't support. And for £70, which is a lot of money, that is more than, I believe that is more than the Pro Controller. I think they should have put near field communication in there. They really should have. But all the buttons are nice. For me, everything is accessible. It took me a while to like get used to having my finger down here for the buttons, but it works. And you do have all the rear buttons as well in case you want to use those, which to be honest, I use them quite a bit. Now, is there anything else I can think of? I think that's pretty much it. So if you fancy one, I do genuinely, hey Leo, I do genuinely think it is the best way of playing your Switch in its twilight years. It is uh, really good for certain things. Like for instance, Brotato. Brotato playing this game on the uh, Joy-Con analog sticks sucks. It's awful. This is fine. This was just as good as playing it on a big boy console. Legend of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom. This, again, without the D-pad being such a menu-heavy game, was kind of, should we say, sub-optimal. With the D-pad, that fixes all of these problems. Uh, same with Binding of Isaac, actually having proper controls. Uh, I could, I could go on here. I could go on. This is such a monumental upgrade if you're really into your Switch. It's also, I, I would say this is fairly durable. Like, 
I'm not that worried about, well, I wouldn't recommend it, but I'm not that worried about if this thing slips off a table or something. As long as it doesn't land like that, it should be able to take a knock or two. Your switch uh, in something like that, I wouldn't recommend it. I would not recommend it at all. I, I would say your switch is going to disintegrate if that comes off uh, any decent height. I already had a switch light once that fell off um, a coffee table. Well, no, it fell off my bedside table. Thanks, Leo. And yeah, the analog stick was busted instantly. Luckily, Nintendo replaced it. So yeah, anyway, that's my overview of the cracked Nitro deck. Would I recommend it? Absolutely. But be aware, this will scratch your Switch 100%. Uh, that is a huge failure on the company. What I probably should have done is put like a bit of paper behind it or something like that. Um, so for me, the product, <laughs> this feels like an early kind of beta product. How that slipped through the R&D, because that texture on the back is like sandpaper. I don't know what they were thinking. I guess they were just thinking of, you know, money. Um, but yeah, that, that's a humongous design oversight, to be honest. And every other grip or accessory on the market for the Switch has these rubber pads that protect the back. Um, but apart from that, if we're just talking, you know, who gives a shit? Let's scratch the Switch to pieces, because fuck it, why not, right? Uh, if you don't care about that, then this is fantastic. This really is. And the amount of customization in the app is incredible. You can change all your dead zones or your sticks. You can swap and remap all of your buttons. Or you would be able to uh, if if the app worked. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> Take from that what you will. Is it worth 70 quid? That's on you guys. That's on you. <laughs>